Alright, um, welcome back to the Mothal Project. Surprise! I'm back. What a lovely day today. Um, so today we're gonna walk on the claws or whatever they're called. The, the second leg parts. Uh, oh, where's my pen? There it is. First things first, just to double check things, um, I'm gonna be doing collaboration. Just in case. You never know when things go not as planned, so I'm gonna do that. Just easy. Uh, come on. Alright, pan calibration, there it is. Uh, uh, yep, there it is. Calibrate. Come on, calibrate. Alright. One, two, three, four. It's on the dot, it's on the dot. Good. There it is. That's all. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. Like that. Alright, let's get starting, I would say. Um I forgot something that I oh yes I did. Copy this and then go for here. Go here. Oh hey Gemini Salami. I forgot one simple simple thing, just one sec, I will get started soon. This should work. Yeah, this should work, definitely work. Alright, um Yeah. Let's get started. Um so I wanted to make these beautiful claw like um talents which you know are representing the bug part of it. So you know you have normal wings and then you have these monstrous claws or whatever they are supposed to be called in so I'm going to be doing that. So, we don't need to put them on the leg, we need to actually do that on claw. So we're going to make first claw one. Uh, that's way too much capitalization, but alright. And we're going to do... Yeah, we have feather part of it and non feather part, alright. So, let's see, I need to go for this kind of zoom in then, I guess. Right, because I can go for like this. Hmm. Now with a big giant knife like structure right there. That could work. Um so let me just take a look at it. That would work, but then I need to make sure that I have everything planned as it should be. So I'm gonna be going for the same approach as here. I think these things are a little bit too big. Could even shorten them out if I want to. Eh, you know what? I'll I'll stick to these big giant talents, which you know are ideal for scrubbing and removing carcasses. You know, getting into carcasses, you can have these big giant dagger-like substances, which you know can stab and then, you know open up. Creature itself, so there it goes. So, yeah, um, today a good subject to be on. So, today we're gonna we're gonna fe feature the claws, which we're gonna do for the bird, giving it the property to strike the enemy. 
with not only the, the hind legs but also with the dagger-like, you know, functional claw claws which can cling on to trees or anything else. That is important because of eh. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I need to look for it. Ah, meh. Going down. Going down, 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 down. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Ah, yeah. It is. Uh, it's right. It's an op it's opportunistic uh, of the highest order. So you know it needs to have a way of dealing that. It has talents which are light and trust from natural. So you know it can scratch, but it has talents which can trust. So that means that they can stab. But they're light, so that's why, you know, they're not that great. These are then a little bit too heavy, aren't they? Yeah, they should be fine. They should be fine, and... It's a graceful flyer, so it could technically just, you know, be flying around, and then, you know, take a rest at the top peak of a tree, and then be dead back. Oh, hey, Blue. Nice to see you join as well. Yeah, let's see. So, yes. I'm trying to get the. Oh, this, this is way too zoomed in. Um, excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, there you go. A little bit less. There you go. No. So, yeah. This thing needs to be, you know. A highly skilled opportunistic flyer, so you know it has these talents to grab on to or lash on to trees or open up carcasses or whatever. You know, they are very, very easy to use, you know, because they're big, giant, dagger like talents which, you know, open up the creature or open up a corpse. Um, the idea here is that these, um, this is more the moth like of approach. So it's more like the moth that, you know, wants to eat stuff. So that's nice. Let's see, so the idea here is that I'm trying to get these talents look nice. Which is always a pain in the ass to do, trust me upon this one. Go away, fly, please. A back of you. Um. So yeah. So these long, alien, uh, alienated, um, tentacle kind of grabby hands are actually a representation of the moth approach, which uh, represent the front legs of the creature. Which have been developed to, you know, stick to walls, or well, stick to any any surface. With these big giant uh, legs, if I may say so myself, these big giant talons, grabby tentacles, or whatever you can call them, whatever, they are easy to. It's easy for them to, you know, linch to places where they are normally not able to linch onto. So like a steed wall or cave entrance or whatever you want them to rest on. Which gives them a high survivability because they are able to, you know, be in almost every climate like trees or whatever. They can just sit there, wait for the target to come and then be like, ha ha, I will now take you. And you know, ambush you. So yeah. These tentacles are really spooky. But yeah, they're not technically tentacles, they're just like like the same as chicken legs, but then uh, a little bit more uh bigger? Yeah. yeah, a little bit more bigger, not no no, more beefier. Yeah. They possess more muscles. The muscles in the legs are more dense than here. They are more like they are they are designed to stand instead of grabbing or slashing or ripping open or helping, you know, 
opening something up. So yeah. Normally the beak only does that, but you know, with the additional hands, you know, the be the hat doesn't have to be that big. The hat is more designed to get into the carcass and then, you know, pick up the big giant meat meat bits up. So that's the idea of the hat to be why it's so small. Also it explains why the hat is so small because you know it has the same proportion as normal moth. And because they are optimistic, you know, you normally should go then for more like a uh um how do you say that one? Conda? No, not conda. Ah uh, what is the name of that bloody damn bird? Mm. Vulture. Ah there it is. Vulture. So the idea is like, you know, they they act like vultures, you know, they but they are assholes. Because, you know, they're like, oh hey, you have meat. Well allow me to just steal it out of your face. <laughs> My grabby hands just took it away from you. So that's the idea. Like these grabby hands are not only grabby, they're also very useful for the uh, approach of being a stealing son of a bitch that took my meal away seven days ago, you know, that kind of thing. So adventurers will not be able to, you know, so easily get rid of these things because, you know, they just steal out, they, 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 just, they just steal your stuff. And you don't want to have them, they do, you don't want to have the stu your stuff being stolen by these things. Oh no, that would be horrible. That would be a terrible thing to have. So yes, these things are a pain in the ass to deal with. As an adventurer group, probably most adventurers will be like, Oh no, not these things again. They steal my stuff. Give it back, you know. So yeah, the, that's the approach and that's why the big giant chicken leg looking like tentacles grabby hands are there. Oh man, that's a lot of words in one go. So yeah, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get this, you know, give a clear information why I would go for this kind of approach. That's the word. I went for this kind of approach to represent all the grabby hands in the world, and you know, I think because this is a bird that is highly opportunistic, I think these big giant hands could work. I could also small uh, make them a little bit more smaller if I want to, because I have the way of doing that. But first, I need to get this thing uh, fixed. So first things first, I need to put down the lack, right? I need to put down the painting that one. Yes, thank you. I can see clearly now. Thank you very much for that. All right. Um. So yeah. Also, I'm gonna change up some little bits here on the sharpness, like you know, they need to be more dagger like instead of. There you go. Much more better. Hooked. Hooked as a doornail. Lovely. So, yeah, um, that's the explanation why I went for that kind of approach. I don't know if people were interested in like why would I go for that kind of approach upon these big giant things but you know I need to represent as well the moth as the bird inside of it or well the hawk inside of it so yeah that's why um, let's take a look at it alright so that's one and if I go now for like which which was So yeah, um, this needs to be more sharpened. Yeah, 
That's more dagger-like. Um, now I need to go for some light brushing. And now we can go from there on to this, to that, uh, that one. Wait, yeah, we need to go back to that one. We go escape that one, and then we can just switch back here. All right, good, 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 good. All right, so now we need to figure out like, um, we're we gonna draw as well the feathers as well. Yes, we must. <laughs> That's the main problem, most likely. So um today we're gonna draw again feathers. So um be prepared, I hope. I hope you're gonna be prepared that I'm gonna draw feathers again. Probably nobody is gonna be surprised about it anymore. Like, wait, you are drawing feathers again? Yes. Claw one. So um I need to get this on top of that and then we're gonna Get these big giant feathers. So we need to have these big giant feathers on on the, these parts. So, oh, that's gonna be difficult, isn't it? Yes, because that means that I need to move like So should I then shorten it out? I should. Claw like. Hmm. I should. Yes, I should put this. Alright, so. So I should remove this part. That's more like it. That's fucking more like it. That's way better. So yeah, um, oh that's on the claw itself, nope, nope, uh, nope, I need to put it on the other one. 
need to put that on the paint layer, so... Because it relies on its wings, it's supposed to be a gli gli glider, but you know, you can never have too many wings. It would be stupid if I don't rely on wings. So yeah, um, this is gonna be a lot of just, you know, me drawing feathers, so excuses for that. I cannot, I cannot be picky about this. That's what I was afraid of. That's what I was afraid of, so... I need to get here done, so I need to get... Um, And to change the image from rotation. Of course it doesn't. There it is. So yeah, um I hope you are enjoying this, you know, it's just, you know, feathers. I'm trying to get things fixed up, but um it's really hard to do things right now. Like um some of the setups I'm still having trouble with, like um, if I want to go for an overlay that I figured out that the overlay was not actually what I supposed to do, so the overlay is supposed to be big, which I kind of ignored, probably, yes, probably ignored it. So yeah, now let's see. So these feathers are actually more bigger than the other ones because, you know, these are far more muscular. They are actually, they were designed to fly. They are lovely feathers. Ah, oh, thank you, bro. Thank you. These feathers are designed to normally fly, but you know, it developed wings instead of feathers, so it kept the feathers, but they are less important to parts where, you know, feathers are non existent Like, for instance, it's still a bird, so it would still have feathers, but, you know, the big feathers are more on the parts where, you know, it, it matters. So, normally it should be on the wings, but the wings have been shortened out. As you can see, the wings have been shortened out to... A size where you know um, feathers are not supposed to be. And now, if I'm now, I'm just gonna be doing this just to check out the zoom uh, reset zoom. And I also want to see the whole image of it because that's important. I want to know what I'm looking at. I also want to know how it looks like. So yeah, looks. It looks good. Looks good. Looks good. So, um, what I'm now gonna do is gonna be uh, doing the same thing as always with the feathers, you know, making nerve and all that stuff. So, this is gonna be again a big giant zoom in. So, beware. There you go. 400. That's good enough. That's fair. 
So yeah. Um This is on the feather part, so it should not be mattering that much on the other side, other part, other part as well. So yeah, this is all gonna be just lovely. It's not like I'm doing anything wrong here. Ooh, this is so, I'm so slow today. I'm finding up subjects to talk about, you know, while while I'm doing things. Yeah. Think. Think. What should I talk about? You know, except feathers, because you know that uh, that's already happening. I'm already doing feathers, so I'm already thinking about feathers. So I should not, I should not have any access to do more things than just feathers. The bigger the feathers are, the more detail I can actually put into them, which is quite nice, if you think about it. It's just that I need to do then, I need to do some fixing afterwards, because I see already that there, I have done some parts where I did a little bit too much on pressuring the uh, stylist, which means that I need to... Um, not remove the parts entirely, but I need to lower the uh, amount of blackness of part or darkness, whatever. It's it's just you know problem because if I go fully black, then you know it won't work quite properly because I cannot see anything. Come on. I think this already looks a way, way better than beforehand. Just already look at the amount of, um, what do you say, detail? Yeah, detail. That has been, you know, lost when, normally when I draw things, so I'm very happy that, you know, I'm getting get more detail back the more I work on this. And so yeah, from an ugly piece of garbage of a hand to a decent looking one, I think I need to do this a little bit more uh, sharper, or well, darker, so that you know, the outlines are visible. That's all. That's the only thing I'm worrying about there.
So yeah, um, let me just just double. Uh, nope. No, 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 no. I I saw you there. My my dot. Mm. So let me take a look at it already. That looks like a decent claw. I like it. Sadly, this this thing is a little bit. Yeah, I need to fix this. I need to fix this texture, but then you know the rest is looking fine to me. So yeah, um, as you can imagine, uh, we're already half hour, half an hour, half an hour in. What a surprise! And I'm, I'm, we're back again on drawing feathers. What are the odds? It's like you know. A bird does not exist without feathers. Huh. Who would have known? So yeah, it, it it is quite it's quite a lot, you know, drawing feathers. It it take it takes a lot of concentration and it takes a lot of time. But you know, you know, if you don't rush it, you know, you should be fine. It just takes a lot of time, and I mean like a lot of it. Shoe fly. Shoo, be gone. I constantly have a fly near me, like, you know, hello there, and then it goes away when I'm trying to shush it out. Eh, annoying little bugger. At least it's not a, at least it's not, at least it's not a mosquito or something like that. It's really looking nice though, all the feathers will be worth it in the end. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think so myself too, like, I might not be the best at, you know, drawing faces or drawing humans, but I I always, you know, when I'm trying to get texture done, you know, it works it works really well. It gives this lifelike a feel um feeling to it. It gives motion and well appeal to it. A lifelike appeal which, you know, gives gives the creature its life. Like if I would draw a T Rex or whatever you know, a dinosaur or a knight, I would definitely engrave the armor or create a texture around, you know, the skin to make it uh, feel nice and well. Ugh. I have no idea how I, if, they, uh, if I said that correctly, but it's just like, I really like to draw, but my, my drawing talent comes with a price which means that I need to do a lot of detail work before I do things and you know the devil is always lost in the details which is quite annoying because you know you're you're doing a lot of work for little rewards most of the times because you know you want to first get the details done before you start something else when el when you know other people already are almost finished or halfway finished, you're still like, I can do this. I just need to have some more time. That's all. So yeah, I'm not gonna be compare. I'm not gonna be comparing people to other people. I'm not gonna compare me to other people, nor I'm gonna compare other people to me. But yeah, I'm a I'm a real slow ass person when it comes to uh, drawing. It's because of the details that I'm trying to use to create the texture, which is most likely most of the problems as well. Like I'm trying to create a perfect texture. Well, if I want to create a perfect texture, that's going to be taking like a lot of time, a lot of practice, a lot of time. And sometimes you don't have that time, but I do. I do. And I promised, and I promised Hex to make this thing, you know, make it a good, make make a good work out of it. And you know, I always like to do my job, and I always keep to my promise that I make it a good thing, so I will not rush this. And once, you know, the colorization is coming, ho, oh, then the detail is coming off. Then the gloves of detail are coming off. Because that means when the colorization is... Uh, well, it eh, doesn't matter actually. It does matter. A little bit. So yeah, if I'm if I'm doing my if I'm doing the things that I wanted to do in the first place, you know, 
I will be here for a long time before I do anything rightfully so. So yeah, um, once the colorization is coming, and oh, this is going to be looking quite well. Normally this happens when, uh, uh, once the whole picture is done, and then I will make the color. And then, you know, once I'm done with the color, I will continue making something, because I think... I need to put this into maybe a tree or something, whatever. I need to I need to put some environment on it. That uh, that's definitely a thing that I'm gonna focus on. Like I like putting animals into an environment. It gives more feeling to it. it gives more realist a realization to it. Like not an absurd environment. You well, you could go for an absurd environment, but it depends on which creature you're drawing. It totally depends on which creature you're drawing. If you're drawing like a big giant creature with a lot of spikes and a lot of hats, then will you go? You can go for an observed environment like you know lava or something like that, a volcano, whatever, or corrupted trees or whatever you like. But this thing, no, this thing needs to be in the bush, bush of the bush, just forest. That's all. It's to be just a normal forest, but you know, with ch with the eggs intact and all that stuff. So yeah, um, and now I'm looking at myself like, holy hell. How far did I already got in this thing? And I'm looking, and I'm, I'm looking again, I'm like, hmm, that's actually pretty far. Even though I'm starting first drawing instead of, you know, coloring. Because the boat project already had, like, the drawing part done, and I did not even record that. So, you know, I did... There is more work to do than just the boat project in general, like... Well... It takes more time to make uh, to make the drawing than the coloring, if I may say so myself. It's because of um, once that your col once your drawing is correct, then you can start you know coloring. Eh. Yeah, when your drawing is correct, then you can start draw uh, coloring. But you always need to remember that there are sometimes places where you know your drawing does not work or you know the drawing looks a little bit strange your proportions are out of order and then you need to fix that so the main problem I face like if I would start first drawing and then if, if I first start coloring and then drawing uh, that would not work for me I don't think that's even an option though should you always start with drawing? probably at least start with a sketch at least. But people that use like only colors, that's like holy hell. That's pretty to look at. I'm more like a person that just kept keeps along, makes feathers, and then looks on looks on the horizon like, oh my god. What did you do today? Well the same thing as I always do, drawing feathers and such. Yeah, you know. Until finally I'm gonna be done. And guess what I'm then gonna do? I'm gonna be drawing no longer feathers. I'm gonna be drawing wood or a basket full of wood and eggs, you know, all that stuff. So yeah, um that's gonna be after this. So you know I need to draw the environment, I need to color the environment, you know, all that stuff. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is trying to figure out if I uh for first thing I'm gonna do is color the creature. Uh oh boy. Gasping. Mm. The first thing I'm gonna do is uh color the creature and then I'm gonna do the environment. Because that way I can already show hacks like, hey, um do you like these colors? Do you like these color schemes that I'm already using? And he can say yes, no, whatever. So he might be more pleased, pleased. Or you already say it's like, wow, that's already finished, and I'm, I can say like, yes, and then I don't have to work anymore. 
So I need to be smart here around like if the Malfoc, if he wants just a Malfoc without any environment, he can also pick that one. Like, it's it's important that I'm asking him that because that way that will save me time on this project. But also, it means that he's already satisfied. And as a good person always says. Never do too much. Never do too much. That's what my neighbor always says. Like, if you want to do something, you don't. You do always need to do it the easy way. If you do it the hard way, then you're gonna be stumping yourself into the ground because you did something that might be a little bit too hard for you to do. If you di did it that way, always do it the easy way. So yeah, I'm gonna be first asking him like. If it would be, you know, if it's already if you if he likes it this way, or should I draw more environment uh, near it? And if he says yes, then I will continue. Otherwise, I will just deliver this. And if I'm correct, the picture picture is gonna be good. Uh, I had a problem. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm still with a problem with the. Uh, uh, with this, uh, with the project of the boat project, um, apparently Creta does something strange with the colorization, or I have a strange color pa uh, palette in it. So yeah, I think I have Driving Crow crazy asking him for feedback on the comic I'm drawing for him. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that happens. That definitely happens, you know. You, if you want to have feedback, then yes, you should ask feedback about the person that you are employ that's that's gonna be hiring you or doing it for you. You know, it's it's important that you have feedback from the customer because you know it's important because the otherwise you know the thing will might be turned bad. So yeah, it's important to ask feedback. And always ask it as much as uh, as much as possible, so that you have the so that you at least have more opinions upon, you know, the feedback. Like, what do you think about it? Well, I think it looks nice. What do you think about it? Well, I think it looks nice. It looks cute. Char characters look cute. Oh man, that's some nice color scheme you have there. Or, oh, I wish I used that background. Wow, that's so beautiful. You know, all that kind of thing. Yeah. If if the customer is satisfied with your work, then you know you're doing a great job. But always ask for feedback because it always can be better. Always. But yeah. Also, I'm thinking. Uh, bleh, I'm thinking. Jesus. Uh, I'm also thinking about. Um, doing some, uh, doing not working on a moth ho a hawk project this Friday because I want to test some stuff on Friday and I don't know if that's gonna be putting my head heavy. But yeah, I will be trying to able, I'm trying to do the moth hawk project, but I might not be able to do it to, tomorrow. It, it depends on how good the results are. On the test I'm gonna run on my PC. Also, it depends on if I'm not if I'm not tired from that thing that I'm trying to test. I'm trying to test quality of some games. So yeah. Also, do you have Twitter? Um, about that, I don't have Twitter. <laughs> if somebody knows, the I probably nobody knows this, but I always live under a rock. It's very cozy down there, so I never get any heads up on what the hell's going on in the real world. But yeah, I don't have Twitter. If I had it, I, I, uh, I would have said so. But no, I don't have Twitter. I, I think I made once a Twitter account, but totally forgot about that. Probably. But yeah. Okay, I just wanted to know. If I should feel bad not following you <laughs> or not, <laughs> don't feel bad upon not following me. Jeez, I'm just a simple man who likes to draw things. All right, 
I'm like a farmer. I produce, I produce, I produce the food that other people consume, and that's like really that's it. I have my words, I have my, I have my opinions, but sometimes you know, the damn chickens are back in town. Eh, we need to get more chickens. Yeah, chickens. So yeah, but uh, that's a terrible impression. But eh, of a farmer. But yeah, the. I'm trying to do my very best, you know, to just, you know, draw. No, 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 no. I need to get a sub brush right about now. I am way, 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 way drawing, way too dark. That's more like it. Ah, <sighs> jeez. Almost was worried, eh? For a moment. But yeah, the um, amount of stuff I'm doing, you know. I'm trying to test out some uh, things like, uh, how do you say? I'm trying to test the quality of my streams because apparently with the update the streams got steadier. I don't know if that's true, so I'm gonna test it out. That's the main idea. I'm gonna try to do a recording of a game, probably gonna be Temtem just because Temtem is lovely to play again, uh, play with. I'm gonna play Brick Brockstone. Yes, the legendary Brick Brockstone. It's totally not Brock for Pokemon, but hey, you know, it's Brick Brockstone. I should then actually name every single Temtem as a Pokemon of Rock type. Yeah, that would be very fun. <laughs> That's such a dick move. But yeah, it's a. It's a. It's really I need to test some uh, things. I'm probably gonna be live streaming it as well, just to test out the recording and the live stream quality of it. So that the more you know, the more you, the more you see. So yeah, uh, that's at least uh, the thing I'm gonna do for tomorrow. So I'm gonna be testing some stuff. Gonna do that in the midday or early days. Depends if I want to be an early bird today. Probably gonna be doing it in the early days, just to so that nobody's gonna be bothered about it, you know, so that I might have a good stamina to recover, so that I am not tired to when so I'm gonna be doing this again. So yeah, probably gonna be doing a live stream in the morning and then you know test some stuff out and do some stuff. So yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> Welcome to the club, Jimmy Zalami. The non-social club, yes, where everybody is totally awkward about socialness. Yes, that's the that, that's the idea. This is why you play Minecraft all day long, just 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 to not be social, and then you know, like, join an online server and start to grieve because you were bored <laughs> with your first thing <laughs> you built. Uh. I am not I am not a good social person especially on Minecraft holy shit I love to build those traps those those were the those were the days booby trap booby trap 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 double trap yes definitely a double trap all right so we did it I'm going to finish off the claw so that you know looks a little bit better than now it doesn't it's a little bit too thick or well, it's a little bit too dull, more more precise. It's a little bit too dull for my taste. My streams lag so much. I just realized I <laughs> my stream just re I was three minutes behind chat. No, you miss so much. You miss so much. If you if you lag behind, man. Oh, the horror. The horror of all the good jokes that I have been told, telling. Uh, even though I'm terrible at jokes, but hey, you know, it's at least a thing. I want to know, this is this better? No. Uh, let's see, so... That's sharp. I like that kind of sharpness. That's a good sharpness. That's a good sharp edge.
You missed the feathers. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You missed all the crow feathers. Oh. So many so many feathers missed. Oh. It's almost unbearable to me. I don't know. It's almost a murder. Yeah, there, there you go. We have now crow pants as well. Jeez. It's almost like a feathering head. <laughs> Jokes. Jokes aside, I'm almost as close to finish this off. There you go. Alright, so now I need to make sure that I have this correctly done. Alright, uh, let's see. So how are these nails? These nails are like that. So, should I? Should I? Wait, I'm gonna save and then I'm gonna be... Should I go for this kind of look? Alright, ah, so the dark line is the problem. Alright, well, why don't we just get rid of that? Hey, got rid of the dark line! Yes! Alright, um, let's see. All right. Um. So how how late is it already? Oh, jeez, it's already that late. All right, save that, save that, sneaky boy. All right, and let's take a look so that we can see what we need to do next turn, next time. So today we finish the first of one, two, three, four of four whole arms. So that's good. That's good to know. So, um, tomorrow I will be, if I'm able, if I'm able, uh, I will be uh, doing the last part here. So, I'm gonna do this one the, on top of it. So that, you know, I can put that on the uh, on a second layer again. And why do I do this all the single time? Or, well, why do I always do this? Because now. Alright, so if I now want to position, you know, this whole thing, so if I want to position, I can now position one to here, here, here. So I don't have to deal with the uh, problem that I had beforehand, and that is that, you know, the, the, the uh, arms would not be... Um, yeah, I could not put the arms in the right position. That That's the main problem I was dealing with with right now so it's really handy dandy so that you know if I have a lag like I want to move this lag well I can I can just you know move the lag around wherever I want it to be instead of you know instead of being somewhere else where it's not supposed to be so it's gonna be helping me a lot it's gonna be helping me a lot to fix my uh, positioning of the whole body so I can move things around I can move one of the wings I can move the full I can move all the wings of it I can uh, move the hat a little bit to one way or another way so that you know I can uh, shape the bird into one whole picture so I can shape the bird the way I want it instead of being forced to redraw do it again, redraw, do it again, so it will save me a lot of busy work. That's that's the whole idea here. That's the whole idea what I'm aiming for at least. So um to cut it to cut it now, I will say I wish you all a good day and have a nice evening or have a nice night or have a nice day, whatever. Uh so have a nice day. And I'll see you all next time. Until then. Bye.